Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a single image triptych in Lightroom, and we're going to do it two ways. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to do is to create a single image triptych like this one here. What we've got is what appears to be a single image behind this overlay, and so we've got the image stretching across three panels. Now it's not as easy to do as you might think, and I've got a couple of methods that we're going to use to do it. We're going to start out with the simpler one, and then if you want to get a little bit more complex, continue to listen, and we'll go through to the more complex version. Before I begin with the print job, of course, I will have edited my image, and I've just done that, so let's go to the print module. Now I'm going to start out in layout style, and I want to select custom package, because I want a brand new custom package. I'm going down here to print job because I'm going to create this so that I can print it to a JPEG file. So from the print to drop down list, I've selected JPEG file. I like this as an option because it lets me create high quality images for printing. Now I'm going to select here custom file dimensions and I've typed in the size of a letter sized piece of paper, but you're going to type in the size of the file that you want to print. I've done 11 by 8.5 because I want a landscape version image. Now for my file resolution, I want this to be 300 ppi, so I'm just going to set that to 300, so it's high quality print. So now that I've done that, I'm ready to set this up. So I'm going to cells, and I've actually pre-measured this, so I know that what I need is three cells, and they each need to be three inches wide and seven and a half inches tall and that's going to let me space them really nicely on a letter sized piece of paper. So I've gone ahead and already created my cell size, and I just went here to one of the cells that I don't use very much, clicked the down pointing arrow, and clicked Edit. And then I went to the New Custom Size dialog, and I typed the height and then the width. I don't know quite why Lightroom is working this way, but it seems to want to be talking about height first and width second. So I've just typed 7.5 by 3 inches, clicked Add, and now we have that as a cell size. And I've actually added that first cell into my display here. And I can go and click on it and add a second one and then a third one. Now if I just dragged out a shape that I really like, I could copy it. So I could go to this one, select it, and then just Alt-Drag away a copy. So if you don't want to specify the size, if you just sort of want to wing it, you can do that as well. But you will want to make sure that you copy this, because you want each of your panels to be the same size. Now I'm just lining these up. I have Snap to Grid turned on here. Under Rulers, Grid, and Guides, I've got Snap Grid here and that's giving me a pretty good arrangement. I'm pretty happy with the spacing there. So now I'm going to drag and drop my image into the panel. I've just got one image here on my film strip, and we're about to see why this is not going to work. So I'm just dragging the image into all three of these boxes. Now this is what you think might work, because you know that if you control drag on this image inside the box, it will move. The problem is that these three images are all stuck together, so I can't get part of the image in each of these boxes, because try as I might, if I move the image in one box, all the others move as well. So that's just not going to cut it. But you know there's a tool in Lightroom called Virtual Copy. And if we make two virtual copies of this image, then we'll be able to work it. So I'm going to right click on the image here in the film strip, and choose Create Virtual Copy. And then I'm going to create a second one, again right clicking on the original image and creating a virtual copy again. Now this is my original image here in the far left of the film strip, so I'm going to drag and drop the first virtual copy in position, and then the second. And now these images will move independently of each other. So I'm just winding back to see the beginning or the rightmost portion of the image here. And then I'm going to click on the middle one, hold the Control key as I move this one into position. I'm just eyeballing this to make sure where the image was, and let's just move it out of the way. And this is looking like a pretty good match for the next part of the image. And then the final part, I'm going to see roughly where the image overlap would be. 
I'm just trying to match up and work out where everything is here. I think this part is this part here. So I want to take this across quite a ways so that it looks as if this is a single image behind everything. And I'm pretty happy with that result. So now I could save this Create Saved Print from this. I'm just going to call this one picture triptych. And I'm just going to click Create. So this is something I can come back to at any time. You can do this with any image. All you're going to do is to create three image cells exactly the same size. You're going to create two virtual copies of your image and then drop a virtual copy into two of these boxes, drop the original into the third, and then you'll have control of them. Now that's the simplest way to do it, but there is another way that I really like and it involves creating a template for this in Photoshop and then bringing it into Lightroom. Once you've created the template in Photoshop, it's going to be available all the time in Lightroom. So let's have a look and see how we do that. We're going to start this process in Photoshop. So I'm going to choose File, New, and I'm going to create a document the exact same size as the document I want to create in Lightroom. It has to be either the exact same size or it has to be the exact same size ratio. For this, the exact same size is the best option for me. So I'm going to choose 11 inches by 8.5 inches and a resolution of 300. I have a white background. That's fine for me. I'm just going to click OK. Now, if you don't set this document up at the exact same size ratio as you plan to use in Lightroom, it's just not going to work. Lightroom's a bit finicky like that, so you want to make sure that you do set it up correctly before you begin. I'm going to click the Rectangle Marquee tool here because what I want to do is to create my three panels. I want them to be the exact same size, so I'm going to click here. Instead of selecting Normal, I'm going to choose Fixed Size. And I want mine to be the 3 inches by 7.5 inches. So I've typed 3 inches wide, 7.5 inches tall. I just need to click here to create this one box. Now you can use different sizes. You can use three panels the exact same size or three panels different sizes. It's up to you. But if you want it even in size, then three inches by seven and a half for a letter size sheet of paper is really good. I'm going to click here to create a brand new layer so that I can dump black into this box. So I have black selected as my foreground color. Note I'm not really concerned about where this is positioned on the page. Don't care about that right now. I'm going to press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill this shape with that color. I'm going to click back on the Move tool. What I want to do is to get two more copies of this layer. So I'm just going to drag the layer onto the new layer icon. So I've got a second layer identical to the first. I'm just going to move the box out of the way so that you can see what's happening here. And then I'm going to do that again. So I want three boxes, each on their own separate layers. Now we need to align these. So to make this nice and even, I'm going to start by creating some guides. So I'm going to choose View and then New Guide. I want one guide at the top which is half an inch because I've measured this so that I have half an inch top and bottom. So I'm going to type 0.5 inches and I want this to be horizontal. So this is the one at the top. Now I want exactly the same but I want it vertical so I want a guide down here. So I'm going to do vertical half an inch, 0.5 and because my default measurements are pixels I need to type in IN for inches. So this is this one down here. And then I need one more guide down here and it needs to be half an inch in from this side. Now the sheet of paper is 11 inches wide. So the guide needs to be at 10 and a half inches. Okay, view, new guide, 10 and a half, 10.5 IN, needs to be vertical, click OK. So there are our guides in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the Move tool, grab this box here and just position it correctly here. And I'm going to go and grab this one and position it here. I'm not concerned about the middle one at this stage because what I can do now is select all three layers by clicking on one, shift click on the third. And what I want to do is I want to distribute their centers evenly. So I'm going to click here on Distribute Centers. I'm just going to click and they're all going to jump into place. And I want them to be all nicely vertical. So I'm going to click on this icon here, which is going to align their tops. Now, it's aligned the tops to the middle one, but that doesn't matter because I've got guides here, so I can just drag everything down into place. Now, 
looks like something has happened a bit weird here. So I'm just going to undo this and start again. So I've got my three shapes here. Let's click, shift click again. And I just want to make sure that these are distributed horizontally correctly. And this time it's working. So I just want my neat presentation here. Now, what I want to do is to use this as a mask. So I'm going to select all these three layers and I'm going to merge them. I'm going to right click and choose Merge Layers. So I have this as a single layer. I'm going to control click on this shape so that I have it selected. Don't actually want the shape any longer. All I want is the selection which I have now. I'm going to take the lock icon from this background layer and just get rid of it so that it is now a regular layer. And I'm going to Alt or Option click on this layer mask. And what that does is it adds a layer mask to this layer that is these three boxes. And effectively what it's doing is poking a hole through this white filled layer. This transparent object is exactly what I need in Lightroom. So what I'm going to do now is to just save this. So I'll choose File and then Save As. We're going to make this a PNG file. So I'm just going to drop it into a folder where I can find it. So I think just generally into my pictures will do for me. And I'm just going to call this Triptych. And it needs to be PNG. And so I need to select Ping as the format. And here it is. So it's Triptych PNG in my, my Pictures folder. So I'll just click Save and click OK again. So now that I'm finished in Photoshop, I can just get rid of Photoshop. And we're back in Lightroom here. I'm going to select these two virtual copies. And I just don't want them any longer. So I'm just going to remove them from the collection. So they're gone. We have only one image in our collection. Now we have an 11 by 8.5 piece of paper, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to now get rid of these panels. And what I'm going to do is to put this image in here and I'm just going to size it to fill the screen. So let's just go and get this. I'm going to drag it out and make sure that it fits in here. I could make it a little bit smaller because I have a half inch border around everything, but I'm not going to bother with that. now. Just going to size it so it fills the sheet of paper. So now what we have to do is to make this into a triptych. We've got the panels that came in as a ping file from Photoshop. And if we just pop that on top of this image, we're going to have a faux triptych. What I need to do to do that is to go to my Page tab and I need to bring that element from Photoshop in as an identity plate. Now, I've already got an identity plate here. What I'm going to do is replace it. So I'm going to click this down pointing arrow. I'm going to choose Edit. And here is my identity plate editor. I need to use a graphical identity plate. So I've got that selected and now I need to go and locate the file. And I'm going to my My Pictures folder because I need to go and get that triptych image. So let's just go down here and find it. Here it is, Triptych Ping, and I'll click Open. I'm being warned that it's a very large file, and that's fine. So I'm just going to click Use anyway. And I'm going to save this so I can use it again in future. So I'm going to click Save As. I'm going to call this One Image Triptych Overlay. And that is going to be accessible anytime I come to Lightroom. So I don't have to create it again in Photoshop. It's just going to be stuck here in Lightroom ready for me to use. I'm going to click OK. And here it is. And this is the reason why we sized it to make it exactly the right size in Photoshop, because we won't be able to stretch this any larger than this document in Lightroom. So I'm just going to grab its bottom corner and stretch it out. And it jumps immediately into position. So what we've got is an exact triptych here. We don't have to worry about moving the images because it's actually implicit in the design because we've just got a single image behind everything. And what we've done is placed over the top this overlay that makes it look as if it's a triptych image. And so I would go ahead, because I've set this up as a JPEG file, when I click Print to File, I'm sending it to the printer. So we can set up and save this. If you like this design, you can save it as a template. So I'm just going to click here to create it as a 
new preset, I'm going to call this one image triptych overlay and then click create. And so this is now accessible in my templates here that I can use at any time. Here we are, one image triptych overlay. So there are two methods of creating a one picture triptych in Lightroom. Use whichever one makes best sense to you. I kind of like the second version because I don't have to do all the lining up manually, but you make your choice. They're the two options that you have for creating this effect. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.